Let me explain something that happened in the last seven months or so, eight months. And when you hear this, you'll be astonished and you may weep. I wept. We had a man, I have to be very careful about how much information I give about this situation, who was assigned to a, a very compartmented classified project. Uh, he was a civilian, a brilliant inventor, someone who knew much more than Tesla or Einstein or any of these people. He had worked out down to the mathematical formula, all the trans-dimensional technologies up to and including, and I'm going to give you a short list, teleportation, dematerialization, anti-gravity, electromagnetogravitic, energy from the vacuum, et cetera, and so on. And I'm just getting started. This guy is amazing. I've been in his lab. His, now the way this works, let me explain this a little bit. Someone like that, he was in, had his own company. The intelligence community came in and stamped everything top secret, put it in a vault. He then got pulled in as a contractor to do special projects for these compartmented operations. Over the last five years, we had convinced them to set him free and to work with us on these technologies. And there were five what they call shepherds. This is the word that's used in the intelligence community, who were his shepherds, who were in charge of this kind of classification or policy. And they all agreed it was time to bring out the first level of what this gentleman could do, which was basically an energy generation device that would run your home or you could put in your car and you would never have to touch a drop of oil and ever have an energy bill. Because he had this. I mean, we saw these things. Now, at this point, what happened is we said, all right, has this actually been vetted, uh, evaluated independently? And they said, yes, absolutely. The top Department of Defense laboratory near Washington, D.C., had taken his information and independently, without his assistance, just from his uh, formula and designs and engineering specifications, replicated precisely what he had, and it worked. When they did that, a group of people came in and said, leave this alone and put it in a vault and never let it come out again. I know the chief scientist of this lab, who is a very good friend of mine. So this is a technology that has been built, tested, independently reproduced, on the shelf, ready to go. In November of 2008, this past November, Dr. Bravo and I and Dr. Loder, our science advisor and our board, hosted this gentleman at my home in Virginia. I live in a country house out near Monticello, Thomas Jefferson's home. And he came and we met for several days and he agreed to build within three months, one of these systems so that we would be able to have this out by this spring to you, the people who need it, the good people of the earth. His intelligent shepherds had said, yes, do it. All of them, all of them together. I had met with them. Within three days of his returning to his skiff, which is the term used for underground electronic eavesproof e eaves place where you cannot get any communications in or out, but it's a highly classified facility. He was reordered out of that facility and dropped into a rat hole in Iraq as a support technician. This, one of the most brilliant scientists on the world today. He called me up and he said just over and over again, Dr. Greer, just be careful. Dr. Greer, just be careful. Dr. Greer, just be careful. He was, someone had put the fear of God in him and he thought he had a clear go because these really well-placed intelligence operatives, but some other people from outside those five shepherds came in and said, oh no, you don't. Now let me tell you what I've asked President Obama to do about this situation. President Obama, 
has received a briefing, a special presidential briefing from me. And if we had time, I would read all of it to you. It will rock your world. But part of it has a section talking about these energy technologies related to this whole, oh, what I talked about yesterday, WSFM, which is what the CIA calls it, weird science and frickin' magic. And in this original that has been provided to the Barack Obama administration and to the new CIA director, I say, look, this man has told me he wants to do it. His immediate shepherds in the intelligence community want him to do it and bring this at first level of this science out. Not the anti-gravity stuff, because that does have some defense issues, but the generation of energy. And we need an executive order from the President of the United States to specifically order this man back to this country or to the United States or someplace outside a war zone to work with us in a white world Manhattan project to bring free and new energy to this planet. Yes. We need it. And here is what I would like each of you to do. Rather than us all being passive and saying, oh my God, what can I do? There are all these characters out there. We need your help. Go to the orionproject.org and let President Obama know that you have learned of this and that there is a man that Dr. Greer knows very well and have his home address, his phone number, his curriculum vitae and resume and know everything about him. And that this would be the new energy economy Barack Obama promised us. And we have an automatic fax system set up, ready to go from the orionproject.org where you can fill out a letter and zap, send it right into the White House. All of you the hundreds of you here should do it tonight and then tell all of your friends and all of your family and all your co-workers to do it and flood the White House email and fax system with this request. Please do it for us. So we live in a very exciting time. This whole adventure has been quite a roller coaster for me and my wife and family and for everyone with whom I work. Enormous work has gone into getting to us where we are today, where we have achieved disclosure, we have made contact, and now we want to bring these energy technologies to the world. And that can be done with your help. I know we have the capacity to do it. And there's a, one, of, one of the most renowned uh, physicists in the world who works in this area has said that the only group that really has a chance at making a run at this is the group that Dr. Greer has put together, both strategically and in terms of leadership. I know we can do it. But we can't do it alone. Because guess who our first level of protection is? Yes, I have security. And yes, we have people in the secret government watching our back. And yes, we have extraterrestrial guardianships watching us and beyond, angelic. But you know the most important is you, each one of you. The reason we went public with as much information as we could, and I'm giving you, I'm really pushing the limit with what I'm saying today and what I've said at this conference, is that you being informed and you telling others, and millions of people around the world who follow what we're doing and know what we're doing, well, you know what that does? That puts a one billion watt spotlight on our project. And what happens when that occurs? These murderers don't like to do things when there's a big spotlight. They're like cockroaches that only come out when the lights are off. La cucaracha. <laughs> <laughs> so the light of truth and the light of disclosure and the light of everyone knowing about this and being aware of it has been our first line of protection. And for that I thank you and I thank Pepon and I thank the uh, organizers of this conference. You see, this is uh, a symbiotic. Now much of what I have to do obviously has been behind the scenes and I've been criticized for that. People say, how can you meet with these devils? I said, because 
they can be transformed also. The power of consciousness, the power of prayer, the power of goodness. Can you imagine that today, 70% of this cabal would like to see this done? Now, the 30% that are the most violent and ruthless have intimidated them, just like when they killed CIA Director Colby, who was trying to help us. But <laughs> here's the point. I'm expendable. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, after I briefed the CIA Director for President Clinton, his, you know, his best friend came to the house and said, to my house and said, I mentioned this yesterday. He said, well, the president won't do this. He'll end up like John F. Kennedy. And I said, it's a dommage. It was too bad. He's the president. I'm not. I'm just a doctor here. At the time, I was living in North Carolina running a busy emergency department. And he says, oh, no, Bill Clinton won't do it. He, he said, but you can. I said, what do you mean I can? What am I, chopped liver? expression meaning I'm nothing. And he basically said yes. You see, because I'm a nobody, and because I'm not important, and because I'm expendable, and because we are the common people, we can do it. They can't. Here's the irony. We're free. They're not. And God help us, we need to step into that power and make this change happen. <laughs> Now, I will tell you that there are some areas that are valid national security concerns with these kinds of technologies. Uh, the electromagnetogravitic systems that would allow you to go from here to, well, let's say, Afghanistan and back in three or four minutes, this could have a defense application, obviously. However, there are other configurations of the technologies that would allow us to just bring out the energy generation component initially. And I see this as a multi-phased process, although we're running out of time to phase it in. It should have started to be phased in in 1902. If the world had evolved to where it could have been, by 1955, we would have not had surface roads. It would have been like the Jetsons where we're floating along. Absolutely. They were fully operational by then. I have photographs from the late 50s and early 60s of what are called alien reproduction vehicles, although it's a bit of a misnomer because they weren't all from studying the ET craft. Some of this was coming along before we began to study the ET craft. And these vehicles were fully operational by then. The irony is that, as Bob Dean pointed out, there are two space programs. The space program we know about and the space program that's secret, absolutely. Now, my uncle worked in the space program we know about because he worked on the lunar module. But you hear things, you learn things when you're at that level of aerospace engineering at Northrop Grumman. But I think that the critical point here is, is that a lot of people say, let's let everything out all at once. And I tell you, I can only do so much. I'm not as young as I used to be. And the other point is, I think we need to walk straight perhaps before we levitate. I would be happy just to be able to run this building without fossil fuels, wouldn't you? Let's do that as a starting point. That we can do this year and next if we get moving. Absolutely, it can be done. And so what I am asking you to do is help us identify, number one, the people in society and in your own circle who are supportive of new energy research. Number two, if anyone here knows of an inventor or an engineer who actually can do this or has done it, that has something ready to be evaluated and will cooperate with a very fast-moving strategic plan to move it out, they need to get hold of me immediately. And number three, if anyone here knows of some people who can provide the startup funding that's clean, not corrupt money, <laughs> clean money, I've turned away tens of millions of dollars because I knew it was dirty. I'm being modest. I turned away $2 billion. Can I tell you this story? 